Hey everybody and welcome to Knit and Crochet Now. I'm Deborah Norville and today we're feeling kind of funky. It's a jeans and boots sort of day as Robin Chachula and Kristen Nicholas are here with some boho inspired fashionably long vests. And with the patterns we've got today, you too can channel your inner hippie. So pick up your needles, grab your hooks and give it a whirl. From the editors of Crochet World, Creative Knitting and Crochet Magazines, it's Knit and Crochet Now, presenting new designs and stitching techniques, featuring Deborah Norville, Ellen Gormley, Ron Strong, Robin Chichula, Kristen Nicholas, and Lena Skavagerson. Stay tuned for knitting, crocheting, yarns, needles, and more. Today's project theme is Vested Interest. I love long vests and jackets because they hide that extra donut I probably shouldn't have had with my morning coffee. And I really love the vests we're going to show you today because they're not only comfy, but they're really, really stylish. And who better to show us some gorgeous crochet numbers than crochet expert Robin Chichula. I love, love, love the vest you've got here today because it's all done in one piece. It is. It's really it cool. Is. And it just looks, I don't know, kind of like Navajo inspired or something. Yeah. Yeah. It would be perfect for, you know, going to that music festival, you know, I can definitely definitely see my young niece throwing it on. Yeah, you know? yeah, absolutely. So tell us what we need to know to make a piece like this. All right, so to get started, this whole piece is in, is just all one. You're going to start all the way at the bottom and work up to your armholes. Okay. And then you go back and forth. The piece will tell you when to stop. So basically, you'll just work one panel and then you'll skip a couple stitches for your armhole, work the back panel, skip a couple, work your next front, and then you just seam at the top. Wow. Yeah. So like, easy. If you haven't made yourself a garment, this is great because it's really just one big rectangle. Right, right. And if you're intimidated by the size of it, you think, gosh, I'm going to get bored or overwhelmed, you could actually make a short hippie um, length one and, and go with that. Absolutely, mm -hmm. to give it a shot. And it looks like it's a couple of different stitches to me. There's something different going on on the bottom than what we see up it where is. the design is. It is. So let me show you what we have going on. So the whole bottom is all this textured looking stitch pattern. Really pretty. Yeah. And what's great is actually it's very simple. All that it is is we're going to do single crochet, double crochet, single crochet, double crochet alternating. Okay. So I have a single, we're going to do a double, just to remind all of our brains, mm -hmm. yarn over, insert your hook into the stitch, pull up a loop, three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, that's our double crochet. Uh -huh. Next is a single crochet, that's just insert your hook, pull up a loop, you have two, yarn over, pull through two, you end with a double, again okay. yarn over, insert your hook into the stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So to get the textured look, right. what's going to happen for every other row going up is you're going to put a single crochet in your doubles and a double crochet in your singles. So since we ended with a double, we're going to start with a single? Exactly. Okay. So in this, the way it's set up, it's set up so it's always going to be that way. Okay. You're always going to start off with a single crochet. So you chain one and turn and then put a single crochet into your double and then a double crochet into your single. And by doing that, because you know single crochets and double crochets are different heights, sure. that's how you get the texture, the, the double crochet pops out. But at the end of the day, it's all even because you're, you're canceling each yes. other out. Yes, yes. So you'll, you'll have them pop out and you'll get a nice cute texture. So if you keep going, I really you get like this the way this great texture. Yeah. Um, it looks so much more complicated. Which is awesome, right? So you, you kind want of a like get a lot of like this. Yeah, yes. you get a lot of credit yeah. from people who don't know how easy it is and right. let them think you're brilliant. Right, Love exactly. That. Kind of surreptitious. Yeah. So, and what's also brilliant about this design is that the colors, so you want, you know, the nice pops of colors, mm -hmm. all the stripes. Well, these all go out and back. What I mean by that is you're going to do just one stripe. You're going to change your color at the end. So, here, you know, when you're normally changing colors, you always want to have two loops left on your hook and change your color. So, you, you know. so, so it's even and, and straight. Yeah, but mm -hmm. at the when you're doing it at the end, you can change your color however you want because you're always going to crochet over that end. Right. You're never going to see it, and so you're going to go all the way out with one and all the way back with one. So your ends, you can see all will always ends. be on the same side. Yes. Mm -hmm. So. You can carry these colors up the edge if you wanted to and just crochet over them instead of having all these millions ends. If I you wanted love to. that. Yeah, so you could just work it in as you go if, right. you, if you wanted to. You never to. need to worry about, oh, that other color is 
way on the mm -hmm. other side. Mm -hmm. It's not. It's That's very great. even. That's and, great. And this pattern, of course, is on the Knit and Crochet Now website. Exactly. And so this is a color that goes all the way and then comes back. And then what's yeah. going on here? This is really pretty with so the two he color. Here's the fun part. So you did this. We can all do this. You know, single crochet, double crochet. Here's our fun color work. If you haven't right. tried color work, this is a great one to do. You know, usually color work would have a chart and everything like this. This doesn't even, you don't even need it. Basically, it's three double crochets with one color, uh -huh. one double crochet with a different. So you can test it out. So let me show you, there's two different ways of doing color. One is to do stranded. And what I mean by that is I'm carrying the working yarn that I'm not using right. behind. So let me show you what mm -hmm. that means. Okay. okay. So I have two light pinks. I need one more light pink. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a double crochet until I have two loops left on my hook. So I have three. Now I have two. Right. Now I'm going to bring in the orange. And all I do Because is your I, next stitch is going to be an orange right, color. I gently lift up and bring in that orange so that the top of my work is still pink mm -hmm, by changing mm -hmm. it there. I'm going to do one orange. And so what that happens with that is you insert your hook, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. Now I need to switch again. So I drop the one and I gently pull up the next. And as you're changing colors, you're not twisting them against each other. You're no. literally just lifting just it and gently working it. Pulling it up. And so the reason why it's nice to do it this way is it gives a thin fabric. So right. if you're working on a garment, you're going to get a thinner, lighter fabric. Mm -hmm. But in crochet, there's always another way to do it. So let me get to the end and we're going to turn. So now we're still doing double crochets. But this time, we're going to have, as you can see on top, we have three double Triple. crochets Are they doubles? Uh -huh. three double in crochets. Mm -hmm. orange and only one in the pink. pink. So let's get to our first one. And now we're going to change the way. I'm going to show you a different way and why we might want to do that. So again, it's still we're going to change our color when we get to two left. Right. So I'm going to change my color. But this time, I'm going to work over Got the one it. I'm not using. And this is called tapestry crochet, where you crochet over that strand. So if you are, I particularly don't care for the strands carrying across the back, so you're just working them the way you would work an end in if you were changing yes, colors. In exactly. A so this is, would be, and so when you get to, when you're ready to change again, it would be just under the stitch and you just lift it up from there to uh -huh. carry and go on under. And you just so, carry the orange across the top of the yeah. pink stitches. So the the benefits for to this is that the front and the back look the same. So mm -hmm. if you look on the piece, this can become a lapel right. because our wrong side and our right side uh, there's no there's beautiful. no ends, yeah. The some of the benefits, some of the drawbacks to this is you're always going to see a little bit of that tail sticking through, so it kind of as long as you're cool with a kind of like a tweedy look, because right. you always see that so a little underneath. hint of color. Or if your gauge is really tight, it's going to be thicker because mm -hmm. you're adding another mm -hmm. yeah. layer. So it's there's positive embedding. Yeah, you have to make a choice. I always say with my students, do whatever you like doing, and then we can make everything else work. Right. Yeah. See, yeah. this is what I love about your approach to crochet. It's just like you know, make it work for you. Exactly. There's Don't no worry right about wrong. the rest of the people. Exactly. There's there, no right or wrong. There are no rules. Okay. Yeah. So. Um, We've got some fringe we need to put on the base. We do. Okay. We do. So, you know, you'll go the, all the way up. Before with the fringe, mm -hmm. you're going to seam. And at the top, right. they have um, a pretty mattress stitch. Mm -hmm. That's where, you know, you just go through one loop and it's all written in your pattern sure. before you had to do that. It's, it's a nice design feature. But what I would do with a, with a garment this heavy, right. instead, I would do a single crochet together, which I mean is by putting my two. Oh, sure. And just and go through the mm -hmm. whole thing. It's a really heavy seam, but it's, you think about it, it's all of your weight is at your shoulder. Yeah, and this is a long garment. So it would give you some stability. Right. Um, but it wouldn't be as pretty, you know. This would, the mattress stitch would open up and kind of give it like an open work right, look at the right. top. Um, but this would be a heavier one and it'd be more heavy duty. Right, but also maybe, you know, if you're worried about your work not Coming standing apart. the test of time. I know I would. Yeah. Because I'm, I'm like hard a little close. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, real quick, just show us so how the last the, uh, thing is fringe the goes. fringe. Mm -hmm. You know, you cut strands of yarn on on our piece. They're all in the same color. color. Mm -hmm. I just have it in a different for for us, so we can see it better. Yeah. About twelve inches long. You fold it in half, and it's you know just the way you like it. So you pull, you can pull it up 
And does you it know, matter where side? you pull it or as long as you're consistent as long and pulling as you're consistent, it in the same spot? And you like it. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. know, either some people like the knot so it's on the back so you or get a pretty V. Mm -hmm. Or they like to see it. Or they like to see it like this. It's beautiful. Either it's way. beautiful. Either what way. a fun project. And of course, if you really want to turn this into a jacket, just crochet up some sleeves and go exactly. to town. Exactly. Great. Exactly. I love it. You yeah. always are just the most inspirational instructor. I love I love when we get a chance to visit. Thank you. Thank you so Thank much, you. Robin. Really appreciate it. Last week, Lena was with us, and she showed us how to knit the Blackberry stitch. This is my version. It was so easy and so fun to knit that I know I'm gonna be doing more projects with this. I love watching how the pattern formed. Coming up next, Ellen is gonna be over in the stitch corner to show us how to work crochet entrelock, which if you've never done it before, you're gonna love because it's a great way to bust through that stash of yarn ends that I know you've got squirreled away. Entrelac is French for interlace, and this swatch does look like the yarn colors are interlaced and woven with each other. But in fact, the gray is made in a strip, and then the next color is added in a strip, and it's built that way. So it's not really interlaced, it's just an illusion. Let's learn how to make it in this Stitch of the Week segment. Chain six. If you're familiar with Tunisian crochet or linked stitches, this might be familiar to you. One, two, three, four, five, six chains on your hook. We're gonna pull up a loop in each chain across and not make full stitches. It's the way we start Tunisian crochet often. I'm not using a Tunisian hook, however, because this is a small piece and a regular hook works just fine for such a tiny piece. I'm pulling up a loop in each chain across and leaving those loops on the hook. Yarn over and pull through just one loop for the first time. But from now on, across the row, yarn over and pull through two loops on the hook. Yarn over, pull through two loops on the hook. All the way across until one loop remains. That's the first row of the first block of the first strip. You can do this. Row two, we're going to keep the the hook on the surface going under that vertical strand and pull up a loop. One, we'll do two, we'll do this all the way across so that there are six loops on the hook. This is how subsequent rows are all made. We'll make four rows of this and then we'll add another block. The way we'll add another block is after this return pass, this return pass remember is yarn over, pull through one, then yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, all the way across the row until one loop remains. At the end of the block, when you've made the number of rows that it tells you to make, we're going to extend out the side by chaining six. This is fun because you get to ignore the first little block you made. It is independent of the second block you're now beginning to make. Chain six and pull up a loop, one in each chain across. This is how the second block is made. Subsequent blocks are all made the same way. So you can continue to make blocks to your heart's content by adding a chain six and pulling up loops just like this. Then we'll yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, just like you did on the first block. This is old hat to you now. When you have the number of rows you need and you've made as many blocks across as you want, you'll have the piece that looks like this. You may go a little entrelot crazy and make a dozen or more little squares and that's up to you. We'll add a new color for the next row independent of the first row, meaning that I'm gonna grab the new yarn, make a slip knot, chain six. I'm not even picking up that first row yet. One, two, three, four, five, six. Again, pull up a loop, one in each chain across. This should be very familiar to you now because this is the same technique we use over and over again in this stitch pattern. It makes a lovely dense pattern and I think you'll really like it when you get the hang of it. That was sometimes called the forward pass when you pick up loops and we have six loops on our hook. Now we'll do the return pass, which is the pull through part. But before we do that, we're gonna join to the first strip. So insert the hook in the last 
stitch of the last block on the previous row of blocks. Pull through that fabric and pull through the first loop on the hook. Then yarn over and pull through two loops on the hook, pull through two loops on the hook. You get the rhythm here, and it does get in a rhythm. Now your next row and subsequent rows, we're going to continue to do this. Pull up a loop in each vertical bar, and before we do the return pass, the yarn over pull through pass, we're going to join it. So make sure you get that last one because that's tricky. Make sure you have six loops on your hook. Now insert the hook in that the next stitch of the previous block, pull through the block, and also pull through the first loop on your hook. Yarn over and pull through two loops on the hook all the way across. This is how subsequent joins are all made. You totally can do this. At the end of that block, we will now slip stitch across to get to the next block. Single crochet to finish that little block because it's the part that hangs off the side here so we have a little finished edge. I've changed colors on you, did you notice? You can change colors as much as you want for entrelock and it creates a terrific fabric. I think you're going to love playing with color and the illusion of interlace. Thanks, Ellen. Now we've got Kristen Nicholas here to show us a simple to knit extra long stripe vest design. It's an earthy gray and white combination of garter stripes that have just this tiny little bit of easy fair aisle. This is a really sharp piece. Isn't it beautiful? And, um, and it's very sort of organic. It's very simple to make yeah, it looks yeah. like. It's actually knit all in one piece. So the two fronts and the back until you get up to the armholes and right. then you split. So you got a lot of basic knitting here, all knits because it's garter stitch, but we're going to learn how to do stripes in two colors. And then this little bit is called fair isle, which is a stranded knitting technique. Right. And so is this and so is this. And then you go back to the striped garter stitch. And the cool thing about this is uh, as a decorative feature. We're, use, we're using this as a little lapel sure. and you should see the back side of the garter stitch, which looks totally different from the front side. It really does, but it doesn't look unpleasant. It doesn't no. look unfinished. No. It just looks kind of fun. Designy. Yeah. 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 So it's very, very, very cool. sweet. It has a crochet edge also. And what I like about this is the, the stripes are almost your guide. So I'm noticing that your armhole is right above where this gray stripe is here. So it actually makes it easy if you find that you get lost on patterns. You know what I call that? What's that? The designer was really nice to the knitter. Love that. You know? Love they those designers. About, yeah, they thought, mm -hmm. they thought about that. So they did the ferrule on this long piece and did not stick the ferrule where the shaping is, which is where you really get confused. Exactly. So how do we start? Okay. So I've knit four rows of garter stitch in the gray, and now I'm going to add my white. And at the bottom of a lot of sweaters, you have to make your bottoms a little bit tighter and then you increase out. And why do they do that? I've noticed that on patterns. It sort of seems an odd place to suddenly get bigger. Well, uh, the bottoms of any kind of garment, has a, it flares. So by having a little tighter, okay. it holds it in. It keeps in. that nice yeah, shape. Got yeah. it. Okay, good to know. So it's really easy to increase. Your pattern will tell you, it'll, it'll usually say increase 20 stitches across or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. you, Divide it into your number of stitches, and then you figure out about how many stitches across you're going to increase. So I'm looking at this, and if I want to increase two stitches evenly across, you don't want to glump them all in the sure. middle because you're going to have this big puff there. So I'd probably make one right there and over there. And I'll show you my favorite easy way to increase also. Okay which is super simple. And you're also going to show us your method for adding a color. Yeah, my uh, method for adding a color is really pretty darn easy. All I do is pick up the end mm -hmm. and knit. Well, that and, looks hard. <laughs> yeah, right. I don't tie it. OK. I don't use two strands or anything. At the very end, when my project is done, I just tighten up the ends. OK. OK. So let's just knit across. And this pattern we should note is on the Knit and Crochet yeah. Now website. So let's go about four. 
four, five. There we go. Okay. okay. My favorite way to increase, especially in this striped garter stitch, is just an easy e-wrap. So I take my thread, I loop it, and I pull it tight. Sometimes okay. called a half hitch. Yep. And we'll do a few more. And what happens is, in the garter stitch, that disappears and you never even see it. So it's sort of like an invisible increase. Right. And so it just gives it you that extra adds, loop on there that you right, need. Right, and it adds that little bit of extra mm -hmm, fullness mm -hmm, which okay. you need. Okay. So here, I'll take it over here. Oh, thank you. Okay. Next, we are going to start our fair aisle. Okay. You can see here that it's all done in a stockinette stitch. It's stockinette, so you don't do garter stitch anymore. And we're going to follow this chart. Here's our first chart. Now, this has got, we're going to work, we're now going back and forth, mm -hmm. okay? And we're going to work two rows of plain white, right. knit across, purl across. And you want to carry your thread up. That's one problem that a lot of people have is when they're doing stripes, they don't know how tight to pull it. Right. Okay. Because you don't want it to bunch, but you, you don't. don't want it to be saggy. Right. So I just sort of drape it on the side and knit. And that's it. And oh, so you just leave it alone, basically. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. If I had a whole bunch, I might twist it along the side. Mm -hmm. And so we would want to knit our two, we would want to knit a row and then purl back for stock and Okay. Okay. And then your pattern's going to begin on your third row. The third row. So we're following our chart. And... And through the magic of television, we're about to start the third row. Right. It's incredible how that happens. <laughs> okay. All right. So if we look at this, mm -hmm. we're going to knit two in red, knit two in white, knit two in red, all the way across. And just continue. Okay. And it's a four stitch repeat, so it's super easy to remember. So I'm going to... Join my red and knit two. Mm -hmm. Now I knit both continental and American ways and if you're going to do a lot of fair isle, I suggest learning that. So okay. what I just did was I knit in the American way my red. Now I'm going to take my white and I'm going to knit two in white using my other hand and I'm going to stretch the stitches out, and the reason you want that to happen is sometimes people will pull too tight and it'll just all suck in and the tension will be totally different on the fair isle section as opposed to the So as net. you're carrying that yarn across, you really want to kind of expand the stitches on the expand needle. Expand it. I stretch mm -hmm. it, pull it across, and that sort of sets my tension. And I'm going to knit two, and now I'm just going to knit two, and I'm going to keep doing this because I want to show you the wrong side because you have to purl then. Coming back. Coming back, mm -hmm. yeah. So, you know, this pattern is super simple. You could do all kinds of fun colors. If you wanted to do more stripes mm -hmm. of Fair Isle, you could do that. Um, it it leads, uh, lends itself to using scraps and Afghan yeah. stuff, you know. Okay. So you can see how fast. You can just throw a pretty little pattern in where you feel like it's getting boring looking too. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here we go. Okay, last two, one last white. two white. Now we're going to turn our work around. Okay, and we're going to follow our chart from this side. So see how I w had white here? Start now with two I'm red now. Two red. Okay. Okay. So I am going to... And you're not twisting it or anything. Hold nope, you don't have to pit yeah. twist it. Yeah, I want, the, I want the camera to get to see. You yeah. should just so, literally picking up the next stitch in red. In red, and I want to do it a little bit loose so it doesn't pull in. And it's always hard on the edge. And now I'm going to do white. So I have sort of flipped my hands. just sort of happens. If you want to weave that in, mm -hmm. You usually don't do it over two stitches, but if you had a very long float, what you would do is pull this up mm -hmm. and take a stitch with the white. Oops, right. Sorry, I'm getting it wrong here. Okay. And it will twist it. Oh, right. Okay. See, and that's, that's what I usually do when I'm in. doing um, yeah, you multiple colors. Yeah, if you go over a lot of floats, but with this, it's just two. So that's how you do Great. the Fair Isle. 
Okay, and then um, let's skip ahead because I want to be able to show everybody at home the crochet edge that right. you've got because okay. that's a nice clean finish to this particular garment. Okay, so here's our edge and we're going to use a crochet hook and we, the thing with putting an edge on is there's no exact science to it. I'm you, glad to hear that. There is okay. not. Okay, they tell you sometimes in patterns how many, but you just have to sort of wing it. And there I, is no crochet police. They are no, not going to no, come and get no, you. There is no, no neck police. So I am going to just, just do a it single on. crochet up the side. Okay. I'm not the best crocheter. Okay. So I'm going to go in here. And, and then you just finish it around. And just, just single go, crochet. Yep. Okay. And what I do is I do it as I think I'm going to do it. This is every other row, mm -hmm. okay? And this is super easy because you've got basically a grid pattern with the stripes yeah, to use. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. But then I do, this is what I always do, is I put it down and I see if it's flaring. If it's starting to flare, then I just rip back and redo it. And make it a little bit more tight. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Right. yeah. This is wonderful. What a, what a fun project that I think anybody who's been intimidated by the big stuff would say, you know what, I can do this. Yeah. Love yeah. it. Well, thank you so much, Kristen. Really appreciate it. And thanks to all of you for being with us. Um, I don't know if today we went back to the 60s or took a journey to the wild, wild west with these vests, but either way, I hope you enjoyed our show. We'd love to hear from you on social media. Share your projects with us, so don't be shy about reaching out. I'm Deborah Norville. This has been Knit and Crochet Now. We'll see you next time. Until then, happy stitching. Information on today's program, Vested Interest, can be found on the web at knitandcrochetnow.com. Brought to you by Annie's, for those who are passionate about yarn and creative expression. With Annie's Craft Store, showcasing patterns and supplies since 1975, and with magazines including Crochet, Creative Knitting, and Crochet World on your favorite newsstand, or at annie'scraftstore.com. Few things are more satisfying than learning a new creative skill. And one of the best places to get top quality craft instruction from some of the best teachers in the country is at anniesonlineclasses.com. We have classes in knitting and crochet and lots of other crafts. Visit us today and watch a free preview. If you find a class you would like to take, we will deliver it to you immediately and it will be yours to keep forever with easy online access from any browser. You can watch, pause, and watch again as many times as you want. You can also find lots of supplies and patterns for your newfound skills at anniescraftstore.com. Please visit us online very soon. Thank you. Knit and Crochet Now is made possible by Boy Needles and Hooks. Over 100 years of providing tools and accessories for all your knitting, crochet, and general craft projects. And by Premier Yarns, supplier of fine, basic, and fashion yarns.